Hey guys, so today I have my first update in my spring project pan. Actually today I'm only showing about three weeks worth of progress because I didn't start this new set of items until about a week or so into April. But even though I've only got about three weeks of progress on these items, I still made some really good progress on them. I did finish one item. It was the one that I was fully expecting to finish, but a win is a win. And I also hit a new pan, so really exciting. I am going to be rolling one new thing into the project, and let's go ahead and get into my updates. So I actually introduced two foundations into my project. Normally I don't do two of the same category in a project pan at once, but these were two foundations that I wanted to finish this year, and I just wanted to kind of go ahead and get a head start on both. I have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation and the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Foundation. I made a lot more progress on the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. This was the one I was wearing most days this month, and you're going to be shocked when you see this progress, okay? Let me go ahead and prepare you now. Look at that. Now, I'm actually questioning whether this first line that I drew here was accurate. It was kind of hard to see where it was at the beginning of the month. Now I do, I can see a line right here, so I am certain that this this second line is accurate, but the first line may or may not have been where I actually was. I might have had less than that when I started out in April, but either way, I only have about this much left. That I know for sure. So. I'm really confident that I'll have this done by the end of this quarter's project pan, which will finish up at the end of June. Um, I, I definitely think I should have no problem finishing this. Now, the Urban Decay Hydromaniac, I have no idea how much longer this is going to take. I did make a little bit of progress this month. You can see about the same amount that I've made every month <laughs> that I've worked on this, but I can still tell there's a ton of product in here. So. This might take me more than this quarter to finish up. Today I'm actually wearing both of these mixed together on my face. I think that's the first time I've ever mixed them together. I don't know if I love that combo. I'm also wearing the Wamisa sunscreen underneath, which was my least favorite of this year's sunscreen roundup. I'm just trying to finish it because it's a really small mini. So that might be part of why I'm not loving my base today. I do feel like things are just looking a little bit textured on my chin. I'll have to try that combo again sometime, but I do really enjoy both of these on their own as well. So that's where we are on both of those. Feeling really good about the ColourPop one and about the same as always on the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. Not really sure. I feel like I'll never finish this, but yeah, maybe by the end of the year, I'll be able to have this empty. So I did hit a new pan this month. This is the BH Cosmetics Belgian Waffle Face Palette. I was so close to hitting pan on this all month. I could see like the little ridge through the powder, but uh, today I did finally hit pan. You can see it's a very tiny sliver of pan here in the shade Buttermilk. Can you even see that? Really tiny pan, but I'm so excited to finally have a pan in that shade. That is the only shade in this palette that I'm working on in this project pan. Um, I have dipped into some of the other shades. In fact, today I'm wearing Buttermilk as my bronzer. That's the only bronzer I have on. And then I'm wearing both Buttermilk and Batter, this middle bronzer shade, as eyeshadow. So those are really the only matte shades I have on my eyes today. And then I also use some of this highlighter powdered sugar in my inner corner. So really excited to have a pan in here after only actively panning it for one month. I am going to go ahead and keep this in the project. I think I'll go ahead and keep it in throughout the rest of this quarter's project because I just want to see how much more progress I can make on it. I'd love to expand the pan in there and just see how much I can use of that. I'm also now working on the Aether Beauty highlighter in the shade Pink Diamond Dust. Of course, no pan in this this month, but I do have a pretty good dip going right there in the middle. Really my goal with this is just to hit pan. I would love to hit pan on it by the end of this quarter if I can, but I really have no idea how deep this pan goes or how long that's going to take. Highlighters do take me a long time to make progress on just because I use such a fluffy brush and I don't use a lot of it. To me, highlighters are the hardest cheek product to pan because I, it's the product that I use the least amount of on my face and it's confined to a pretty small area of my face. So this one is probably going to be in for the long haul, but I don't mind because I love this highlighter and I am wearing that today. It's a beautiful, just glistening, wet looking highlighter. And I think this shade being like a golden peach shade is going to be perfect moving into the summer months, the warmer weather. Last face product before we get into some eye products. This is the product that I finished, or I'm going to go ahead and call it finished. I have probably just one use left in here, but this is the Revolution Fix and Glow setting spray. I'm probably going to, yeah, I'll finish this off like tomorrow and go ahead and put it in my empties. But this I'm going to go ahead and roll out of the project because it's basically finished and I will be rolling something new in. Really happy to have this done and to just 
move out this bottle because it's been really close to being done for a while. I just went through a long phase where I wasn't really using any setting spray, but I'm definitely back in the setting spray mood and I am going to miss this one because it's a really pretty glowy setting spray that I also feel like gives my makeup some added longevity too because it does contain um, denatured alcohol, which is really like if you want a setting spray to be a long wear setting spray, it's probably going to have to have denatured alcohol in it. And so I feel like not only does this give my skin a nice glow, but it also seems to help lock my makeup in. So really good setting spray if you're looking for a good glowy setting spray. I very well might repurchase this, I'm not sure, but I also kind of want to try something new. So if you have any other setting sprays, glowy setting sprays in particular that you think I would like, let me know because I'm in the market for another one. So I will share the new product that I'm rolling in at the end of this video, but first let me go ahead and show you the rest of the progress I've made this month. So we have next the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in Taupe. And and my goal this month was really just to see if I could find a way to use this and to incorporate this into my current routine that I enjoy. And I did finally find a way that I like to use this. I used to use this as basically my sole brow product. And nowadays that's not really my preferred brow look. I really like to just use a brow gel and then just fill in any little gaps with either a brow pen or a pencil but I've also been doing that with this pomade and I found that's my favorite way to use this now. So first I'll go through my brows with my NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Gel, favorite brow gel. And then sometimes, you know, I'll have little gaps in my brows like towards the tail or I just want to thicken up the front end of my brow a little bit. So I'll just do like a few strokes of this in my brows and that's the best way I found that I like using it now. Um, I also tried applying it before the brow gel, but I felt like the brow gel would end up just causing this to smear around and my brows would end up looking kind of messy. Um, and then I also tried using this by itself and I just don't really love that look on myself anymore. But I have decided to go ahead and leave this in the project and keep using it. I'm not going to force myself to use it every single day, but I'm just going to try to incorporate it as much as I can because this is getting really old and I would like to finish it or at least come close to finishing it this year. Another little potted product I have here, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow in Rose Gold. Really just trying to make sure I use this shadow this year and not just let it sit because this is one of those things that if I don't put it in my project pan, I'm just not going to use it. Even though I like it, I enjoy using it and there are a lot of great ways I can incorporate this into a lot of the looks I do. So definitely not trying to use it every single day, but just whenever I can. I feel like I probably use this about five times in April. I'm not keeping track of my uses, but I would guess it was in that ballpark. And I do think I expanded the dip a little bit. I would love to hit pan on this or hit the glass. And I don't really know how much farther that'll be. I, I mean, it, it'll probably be a while before then, but I also did try to use this as a blush one time this month, but I didn't really like it for that. I had a hard time blending it out. It looked kind of patchy, and I think it's just too metallic for me to wear as a blush. Just, I don't really like a super metallic blush. I don't mind a glowy blush, but this just didn't look right on my cheeks, but I do really like it on the eyes. And today I actually am wearing this as an eyeshadow base, and I like wearing this as a base under a lot of different looks, even if the look I'm doing isn't really particularly rosy or rose gold. I still sometimes like being able to see that warm rose gold glow like peeking through the other shadows that I put on top of it. I think it can look really pretty. So I've been wearing this just whenever it makes sense to wear and I've been really enjoying it. It's a very soft creamy shadow if you're not familiar with these. So I really just kind of tap my finger in there and it's sort of a moussey, like whipped texture. I usually get enough for one eyelid, just tapping my finger in there once. Really glad to be getting consistent use out of this again because it was not cheap and it's one of those products I really want to make sure I don't neglect. Next, I have a handful of lip products I'm working on, starting with the Minted Peach Lip Pencil. I made a really good chunk of progress on this this month. Um, today, I actually am wearing this on my cheeks, just in the outer part of my cheeks, and then I have the Burt's Bees lip crayon that I'm also panning more towards the center, and I also have both of those on my lips right now. I really like wearing the same lip products on both my cheeks and my lips because it just makes the look so cohesive and just ties everything together really nicely. That was actually the only time I've worn this as a blush this month. All the other times I used it was just on my lips, and I made a really nice little chunk of progress there. I would say, I mean, at this rate, I'm definitely on track to finish this by the end of this quarter and I think that will be very easy to do. Really loving peach these days, peach, peachy lips, peachy eyeshadow, peachy blush, just all the peach. I want it all over my face so I've been 
really having no problem reaching for that. And same with the Burt's Bees Lip Crayon. This is in the shade Santorini Sunrise, and most of the times I wore this this month, again, was just as a lipstick. Today was also the first time I tried wearing this as a cream blush, and I do really like the way it looks. I'm curious to see how it holds up on my cheeks, because it is a kind of glossy formula, so I didn't make quite as much progress on this as on the Minted Pencil. Not quite as much progress as I would have hoped. Just really, just a little bit there. Um, hoping to make more progress on this in May. In April, I wasn't wearing very much cream blush. I was more reaching for my powder blushes, but I do think I'll be wearing this as a blush a lot more in May, so I think we'll see a lot more progress. Also, because we'll just have four full weeks of progress before my next update instead of three, but still happy to have made a small amount of progress on that. The gloss I'm working on right now is the Tower 28 Lip Gloss in Pistachio, and I also made a nice little chunk of progress in here. I feel like I could have made more progress. The month kind of just got away from me. I feel like April flew by, but this is a gloss that does go pretty quickly. Like, every time I use it, I feel like I notice the, the product going down, and this, you can really see exactly how much you have in there. I just leave it standing upright, and it does settle for me, so I would really like to have this finished by the end of this quarter, so I will, if I do do that, then I'll have to make probably about double that amount of progress for the next couple of months, which I think I can do. Um, I'll just have to, like, keep remembering to wear this and reapply it throughout the day. So that brings us to the new product that I'm rolling in, and I did decide I want to work on another eyeshadow, a powder eyeshadow. I do have that cream Charlotte Tilbury shadow, but this year I'm really trying to hit more pans in my palettes, in my singles, just any powder shadows. So I had a few different options in mind, but I pulled my patrons and members to ask which one they wanted me to work on first, and the one with the most votes, at least as of right now, on both, across both platforms was the Clarity So Amazing palette. I'm actually really glad that you guys chose this one because I, I knew this one is going to be a challenge for sure compared to some of the other options, but I have been so in the mood for this palette recently that I think it's going to be a lot of fun to work on. And if you remember last year, I did a pan those eyeshadows for a few months last year. I'm not doing that series anymore. I don't really have any plans to bring it back either. Um, I'm having more fun just having like one palette in my project at a time, just in my regular project pan, because I felt a little just a little restricted with that project. But anyway, if you remember that project, I did have this shade rolled in there for I think about a month, like last spring, probably around this time last year. And there is a pretty big dip in that shade, you can see. So that would probably be the first shade that I would hit pan on. And my goal with this would just be to hit pan on one shade and then I would roll it out. So I definitely think I can do that at least by the end of this quarter. And this is also just the prime time of year to be using pastels and colorful shades. I'm just really into these tones right now. So this right here is the shade I have on my lid right now over that Charlotte Tilbury rose gold cream shadow. And you can see, even though you wouldn't really think to apply this shade over a rose gold, I think they actually work together really nicely. You can see just a little bit of rosiness peeking through. And yeah, I think it works. So this shade has actually been a lot more versatile than I would have expected. So I do think there are a lot of ways that I can pair these together, but of course I, I'm sure I'll also, you know, use them separately a lot, but I'm, I'm just really excited to get more use on this. I've had this for a couple of years now and, you know, you can definitely see some usage, but I would like to see at least one pan in here. These pans are really wide. I'm not sure how deep they go. I don't think, uh, yeah, I've never hit pan on a clarity shadow. So We'll see how long it takes, but I do think O oh, Ship will be the first shade that I hit pan on. But I am so excited to have another excuse to wear this palette more because it's one of my favorites this time of year and there's just so many different looks you can do. Even if I'm not using any of the matte shades, I love all the shimmers in here as a topper. I mean, you can see on my lids right now, they have just such a gorgeous like scattered glitter look on the eyes, so I'm I'm just so excited to use this more. So that will be my new roll-in to replace the Revolution Setting Spray, and I'm really feeling good about all these products. Even though I had a bit of a shorter amount of time to work on these this month, I still made some good progress, and I'm still feeling really excited to reach for all of these things, so that tells me that I'm on the right track. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. I hope you had fun. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you did. 
Also, I would love to have you over on Patreon or my channel membership. I have just both platforms so you can decide which one you prefer, but I do like to poll my patrons and members on, you know, which Project Pan item I should work on next. Members also get early access to all my Project Pan updates, as well as an exclusive bonus video every month. So if you'd like to join, it's $2 a month to get access to all of that, and all of it will be linked below. But thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!